Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to Let's Play Evolution. Evolution is one of my favorite real life board games. We play it very regularly at my weekly board game sessions with my buddies. Um, it is really wonderful. I did a video for the digital adaptation of this a long time ago. I think it was still in the Kickstarter thing, so it was a pretty early build. Um, but now the real version is out. It's available on computers and Android and all those things. And I actually really, I tend to really like, um, ooh, there we go. I like uh, board games. Uh, digital adaptation of board games for like uh, mobile devices and stuff. It's really nice to play on all the flights that I take. Um, so I'm really eager for this one because I think it is a truly wonderful game. Um, beautiful, fairly easy to learn to play, but incredibly deep in terms of strategy and whatnot. Excuse me a second. I'm going to open my soda here so that I can hydrate my mouth just a little bit mm, before we start. Okay. Um, there is online play, as per usual, I haven't actually tried this, so I can't comment on, uh, you know, how good or whatnot that is, but it does exist. Uh, there is a sort of campaign mode for your local game here, where you go around and there's a bunch of different sort of campaign missions, I think it's like 20 or 24 or something like that. They all have a slightly different flavor, They're, you know, they put you up against an AI that's trying to play in a certain way, um, and they may have a slightly different card pool. It's a good way to learn the game, actually, because they're slowly sort of introducing some of the context. Um, or concepts of the game. But, uh, and the other thing to do by unlocking the campaign, you can unlock a bunch of new profile pictures and all kinds of stuff like that. But we're gonna go into the AI game over here. We'll discard a previous one and there we go. So it is a game that you play from one to four players. Um, I think with the expansions, I think it adds support for more players in the, in the physical version. Uh, the expansions are quite cool. I personally, I have um, Evolution Climate, which adds this whole like temperature track to the game. So it can get colder or hotter, which can affect how you build your species. It's really cool. And this is in fact a game where you're gonna be building building up some species and trying to compete for a limited pool of resource, limited pool of plant food, but also maybe you're gonna evolve into a carnivore and then you'll be attacking other player species instead. Um, the AI goes all the way to expert, although you have to unlock expert in the campaign, which I haven't done. I've just basically started on this uh, this build here. Um, the regular RS AI basically just, you know, tries to play as good as it can, but in, in the campaign, you can also unlock different flavors of AI who will try to play in a particular way. So this one here, for example, will try to evolve into a carnivore and be a but the regular AI, if they get some good carnivore cards, will play as carnivores as well. So we're going to do this. I think it's going to be a good baseline experience to the game. We get different backgrounds. Looks like we got the desert watering hole this time around. Has no impact on gameplay, uh, but, you know, just gives you a little bit of variation of flavor. So every player has a, a, one species in play all the time. You can, or at least one species, you can't have more than one species. And I know the, the screen's sort of grayed out right now because it wants me to play a food card, but I just sort of want to explain what's going on here first. Um, each species has a population. We start at population one. Each species has a body size. We start at a, a size of one, and it has room for three traits in here. Every turn, you're gonna draw three cards plus one for every species you have in play. So because you're always gonna have at least one species, you always draw at least four cards. These are trait cards, so they can go and modify a species. For example, turn a species into a carnivore. But what we're doing right now is each one of us have to take one card from our hand, play it face down in the middle in the watering hole. And the only thing this card is gonna be used for is the food amount in the top left corner. This is how much plant food is gonna be added to the watering hole for herbivores to to feed off of. Um, I think the highest card I've seen is a nine, but they can actually go all the way into the negatives. I think I've seen as far as a negative three. So we have no idea how much food is gonna be in the watering hole for herbivores on any given round of play. Um, this little dinosaur token here, which is totes adorbs, especially in the real life version, it's this big wooden piece, it's just gorgeous. This is who's gonna be first player. You're not guaranteed to be first player if you're a human. We just got sort of lucky here. Um, the first player is gonna be the first person to feed. So if there's limited food, you're gonna get first crack at it, which is very handy. Although you only feed one species at a time and then it goes to the next player and then eventually it comes back to you so you can feed another species or maybe if you've got a species with high population, you feed a second time and so on. So just because we're first player doesn't mean we're gonna be able to eat as much food as we want, but it helps a little. However, on a downside, Players are going to put down their traits and raise their population things in player order. So I'll be the first to do it, which means I won't have any idea if the other players might be doing something I have to be a bit concerned about. Traits are played face down. So let's say I was last player. Everyone else would play their traits first. They'd be face down, so I wouldn't know what they play, but I would know if they were making multiple species. I would know if they were making one species big. Big species, 
tend to be carnivores. So you can sort of maybe read a little bit like that. Anyway, we don't have any info. I could make a carnivore right away, which would be fun. Carnivores are very risky. They're, they're a little less consistent, but they're pretty fun. The other thing that's fun is making lots of species. I'm just trying to decide because I'm going to have to decide what to pitch away. If I push this carnivore card, there's going to be tons of food, probably way more food than we need. Hard shell, good for defense. Horn's also nice for defense because it hurts carnivores. Tell you what, let's make a carnivore. And as a carnivore, I don't care about plant food. So I'm going to pitch one of the low numbers here. Uh, I'll pitch the, the horn. So we know there won't be that much food in the middle. So yeah, we have to play first. So what I can do, I can always pitch a trait card to make a new species. So now I have two, or I can undo that. I can pitch a trait card to increase my size and or my population. I can do all of that. I mean, I can do I can do all that. I can make a new species, make it bigger, add population to the first one. I've got tons of options there. Or I can play a trait as a trait. So now this guy's got hard chill. So his body size is four higher for defense. Carnivores can only eat things that are smaller than them. So a hard shell is pretty effective at defending you for carnivores. So if I want to be a carnivore, I have to play that trait. Again, this is currently being played face down. The other players don't know that I'm doing that. But I'm going to have to be bigger. So a size one carnivore can't eat anything. So let's say I'm going to pitch the hard shell here. So hard shell is only for defense. So I have to increase my real body size. So now I could eat anyone that's got a size of one. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my population. So for each population you have, you need one food to feed that population. So now I'm going to have to have two food to keep everyone alive. If I don't eat enough, then I'll lose some of my people. If I don't eat any, I'm going to lose my entire species and go extinct. But I'm going to bet that I'm, well, the AI will know that I've done this, the body size thing. They might suspect that I'm going to be playing a carnivore. However, if they don't, it's possible they're going to multiply and get a bunch of different species and they'll have lots of feeding opportunities. It's risky. Okay, he's gone and made a new species. He hasn't grown his species, which is good. Making multiple species early on, oh, this guy's really doing that, is great because you draw more cards. At the start of your turn, you draw cards. You got draw three cards plus one for every species you have in play. So lots of species equals drawing lots of cards. But my job is going to be to try to knock that down a fair bit. Um... If a species has a trait and it's killed, you do draw a card to replace that lost trait. However, you don't draw a card to replace the card you spent to make a species. So now I wanna to try to think about eating strategically. Okay, I can't eat either of these two guys. So if I drag my species or I highlight it, you can see it highlights some species, but not others. I can't attack this one because he's defended by hard shell. He's too big. This guy's got climbing. I can only attack him if I've got climbing. This guy's got a hard shell as well. Everyone else is fair game though. I'm gonna start by attacking this guy because he can't be um, he can't be attacked once he's fed. So I'm gonna go and bop him. So then he's gonna feed from the plant, from the watering hole. Same here, same here. You can only feed one species at a time. It's back to me. Now what I want to do is I want to whittle this guy's down, this guy's uh, species down. This species is already eaten. So that food, even if I were to go and eat this guy, this guy, this food has already been banked. What do I mean by that? The amount of food you eat over the course of the game is the primary source of points that you have. You earn one point for every food you have eaten. Even if this guy dies now, he still gets a, a point for having eaten that food. Um, you also get points at the end of the game for every unit of population you have currently alive, as well as every trait you currently have in play. So if I want to get, deny this guy one extra point, I'm going to eat this guy before he gets a chance to feed. I could go and eat this guy and hit, just knock off one unit of population. He'd still have this species. Um, but... I think it's better to do this because it's going to deny him a point and an extra card draw by eliminating that species. Plus, then it's wasted the card that he went to play to make that species. So I'm banking my stuff. We've got food left over, which is very interesting because it does carry over from round to round. Now, we got to choose what we're going to do again. What we could do, and often when you're playing a carnivore, you tend to want, want one big-ass carnivore rather than lots of little species. Pack hunting is a great card to add to a carnivore. You add your species population to its body size, which is really, really good because you can grow your population so you can eat more food and it still effectively grows your size. Ambush is quite nice because it negates the warning call ability. Not that we know that everyone's got that. Horn's a defensive ability, so is symbiosis. I could make another species, but I think what we're probably going to do is we're going to make our one carnivore huge and badass. Um... I might want to save Ambush, or hell, I even might want to play Ambush on this guy. I'm tempted to, I, I want less food because I'm not an herbivore. I don't care how much food is in the middle. So less food is better. 
but I think I'm going to ditch the horns. I might be tempted to keep Symbiosis because it's interesting. This species cannot be attacked if your species to the right has a larger body size. So if I make a species here, it can be a symbiotic species to my uh, carnivore. Now, I'm playing last because I was first last turn. So now I get to see what everyone else is doing, right? And that gives me a bit of a hint. Again, these species, these trait cards are placed face down. But all right, no, I know this guy is going to be vulnerable. So is probably, well, this could be a warning call. If this is a warning call, I won't be able to attack either of the two adjacent species unless I have ambush. I'm not too worried about size. The pack hunting thing is less bad. Maybe I will plop down ambush to guarantee I can eat these guys. So I know I can eat him, him, him. I know I can get at least three food. I might be able to get more if I do this. I'll get down the, the pack hunting. And I think I will grow my population. It was nice to think about saving cards, but I think this is going to be better. So I'm effectively size five, but I've got the extra population, so I'll be able to eat more. Okay, he's now a climber, so I won't be able to attack him unless I develop climbing or intelligence or something like that. Uh, so... Oh, and he's got a hard shell. I'm almost there. He's a size six. I'm a size five. And... Uh, he does have Warning Call, which would have protected his two side species, but it's not going to be the case here. Um, I don't know if it matters sort of who I eat first. I want to eat one of the two that haven't eaten first to deny points, so it doesn't really matter too much. I'll go here. And there's going to be a lot of food left in the middle here. I'm going to go and bop you. We haven't fed yet. You should have actually fed him for points. Oh, look at the croc. That's cool. And then I'm going to feed from the only person I can still feed. By the way, when I do a carnivore thing against someone, the amount of food I get is based on their body size. So if you attack someone with more body size, you'll get more food for feeding actions, which sometimes you want to avoid because you still only eat one population per, so you'll do less damage if you're filling up on a big creature. But sometimes you're going to want it for other things. Okay. Um, I think... I think what I need to do is make this guy bigger, which I can do from an increased population, although that might be hard to keep everyone fed. I want to make sure I can kill the guys with the hard shells and take them out. I still can't deal with the climbing species. And he's got fertile. If there's a food in the watering hole from the previous round left over, he gets a population for free, which he is getting. That's quite nice. I don't need another pack hunting, so I'm going to throw it in for negative three food. Really hurt the herbivores and also hurt the, try to hurt the fertile ones here. If at all possible. If this guy develops pack hunting, I won't be able... I already can't attack him because I don't climb. So... I think what I'll do... Is I will boost my population by one. And then just my size. I mean, population is size, but population I have to feed more. So effectively, I'm a size eight right now. Which means I should be able to eat him and him... Now, I don't usually play Carnivore. It's very risky because people can develop effective advances against it. And then all of a sudden your Carnivore just starves out. Um, but we're doing okay here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll start with you to prevent you from feeding a second time and earning an extra point. And then I'll feed this guy. And I'll actually be able to feed off him twice. So this time I'm going to get two food because he's a body size two. And then I'll feed another time. I'll, I won't get to bank the extra food. But it still hurts them by keeping his population down. But yeah, all the fertile people are going to do really well here. So I've got nothing else to do. So the herbivores are just doing that. But yeah, there's food left over. If I can get a fertile sized species, that would be really handy here. Because I'm keeping down the number of herbivores. So it's actually keeping more food in the middle. Oh, cooperative. Um, that, in climate, it's explicit it won't work. Because every feeding share one food to the right. And the carnivore card... Must attack and eat other species. Yeah, carnivores can't benefit from plant species. So what would I would often do is make a new species here, put cooperative on it, and it would feed and then share over there, but that's not going to be the case. However, your non-carnivores are sort of omnivores. They can eat anything. So my carnivore could be cooperative and, and share food, but it's not going to be the case. Symbiosis, I think we are going to set this up. There's intelligence I might want to save. Okay, I'll ditch the pack hunting because I'm not making another carnivore. Um, I guess... Okay. I'm gonna... Hmm. Yeah, I will burn you and put... 
Actually, what's the chance that someone else is going to make a carnivore? Probably pretty slim. Hold on. If I'm not worried about someone making a carnivore, then I don't need to worry about keeping symbiosis. Why don't I do this and that and put cooperating here? So he will feed and give things to the right. I'm going to be the second one to feed. And one of the things, the carnivore can often wait until the end to eat. Oh, more people becoming fertile. Okay. Oh, there's tons of food in the middle. Kind of as expected. Oh, I didn't realize more plants would show up as there's more... Oh my god, that's gorgeous. Alright, he went. Now I'm going to go... And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed with this species, and he, he's cooperative, so he takes an extra food and gives it to the guy on the right. So my herbivores are completely fed. Now we're going to start to... Car Ooh, shh. Oh, he's flying. Or he's climbing. Son of a... So the only guy I can attack is this. I'm only going to be able to eat the one time. I get two food because he's body size too, but I'm going to lose some of my carnivores here. Dang. Oh, wait. Here's the thing. Your carnivore has to eat. I have no option but to eat my own species. I'm going to eat both my species. Wow, that is... <sighs> that is really annoying. I still bank the food that uh, my, my eaten species had eaten. So that's something, but oof. Okay, literally everyone's got climbing. I did not draw climbing, which is too bad, but what I did draw... Um, let me ditch you, is I did draw intelligence. So I'm going to have to replace... I guess I can replace ambush, because no one's got warning call. So I will replace ambush with intelligence. So I can discard a card to ignore special ability. It sort of sucks. I'm going to have to trash cards to eat the climbers. But it'll have to be. Um, I could eat, like, each one of these once, for example. Um, you've got a body size of 7, but we're going to have an 8, because we still have Pack Hunter. Okay, and that'll fill me up, so that's going to be okay. So I could play a card to make a new species. And they're all good. They all have advantages. I'm just going to ditch um, Burrowing. I'm still going to try to make one new species. I mean, I'm going to have to ditch everything for the Intelligence. Yeah. Because you have nothing else defensive other than climbing that I have to ignore. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. So I'll still get another species for another draw. I guess I don't know what they're going to play. They might do something else to, like, change the math. Well, they're making new species, which will make life a little easier. More climbing. Horns is annoying. You lose a population. 23 food in the middle is lots. I'm going to start by feeding my herbivore here. He's got the cooperating tech. Look how much food he got for free. Because he's cooperating, so he's sharing food. This guy's a forager, so he gets extra plant food. Um, and he's going to get food whenever I go and do my aggressive stuff. So the question is, who do I want to attack? No matter who I attack, I'm going to have to discard cards. I'm going to go after you. Because you're going to bank a lot of stuff. Play a card, negate climbing. And you do get the food from the scavenger, which is annoying. Uh... Oh, if I attack you, I eliminate the species completely. So yeah, let's do that. Done. Alright, the rest are just going to feed with whatever's left in here. I did not bank very much. I think we we're going to lose here. By the way, the game ends when this deck runs out of cards. The turn that it runs out of cards is going to be the last turn. Um, any You do reshuffle your discards so that people still get cards as proper on that turn, but that's about it. Fertile could do some great growth stuff for our species. Um, hello, I can actually replace Intelligence with Climbing, which is going to be good enough. Okay, I'm going to throw Fertile for a bunch of food. I will replace Intelligence with Climbing, so I don't have to keep discarding cards to ignore Climbing. I'm going to throw Fertile on here, so this guy will actually grow a population on my turn, which is nice. Um, 
And then what do I do with the others? Do I grow population? There's a good chance we're going to be able to feed pretty good. Am I worried about someone else developing a carnivore? This guy could, actually. It'd be pretty effective carnivore. Body size? Eh, maybe not so much. I could grow my carnivores, you know, species, like, population, which keeps his size up. And he's probably going to be able to feed pretty good here. It's got There's tons of vulnerable climbers all over. This carnivore is going to be able to feed, like, mad. I think I'm going to do that. Burrowing could keep this guy safer, although burrowing with fertile doesn't really work out so well. I think this is going to be a good move. Bigger size means I can eat more of them, and it gives me more um, score here. Yeah, lots of plant life. Fertile, so we grew. A bunch of them are doing the same thing. I'm going to grab food here first. Or am I? Because the sooner I start eating them, the more I deny them a bunch of food. No, I want to make sure to keep this alive. Yeah, he's grabbing tons here. Um, I guess there probably will still be food next. Yeah, because they're not eating 13 in one go. Oh, you're defended by Warning Call. Right, because I don't have Ambush, but I can attack this guy. This guy's got Warning Call, so he's still vulnerable. Three food in one go. Do I want to keep whacking on the same guy? Did I crack at this guy? I mean, that would finish me. That would fill me up. So I'm going to do this instead so that I can still feed one more time and, and take someone else's population again. I, can, I think I can wait on this. Yeah, I don't like... I want to kill these guys with the cooperation as much as possible. All right, there's going to be food left over, so our fertile here is still going to proc. And this guy's full, so the fertile doesn't do much. Actually, that's one of the things. I could have ignored the guys with fertile. That may have been better, because they're going to regrow their population. Last round. Okay. So, we've got to play a food card still. I'm not worried about someone else becoming a carnivore. I could make another one, but I don't think so. Um, I am going to be feeding sort of middle... Yeah, we'll put in a little bit more food. What I think I'm going to do here is I'll make a new species with Fertile. There's going to be a fair amount of population. Um, here's the thing. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to feed, like, if I go crazy, I might not be able to feed everyone. So I could raise the population. Plus one pop. Like, every population gives you a victory point at the end of the game. Um, plus, extra population means I can eat more, which gives me more victory points. On the other hand, if I'm a little bit unsure, I could just develop some traits here. Because a trait is also worth a victory point. It doesn't let me eat more. It comes down to how scared am I of this filling up. You know, let, let's let's go. Let's take the risk. We'll increase some pops. Keep in mind, we're going to have a lot of population because our fertile is going to kick in as well. We're definitely going to want to prioritize having the herbivores eat first. Especially since I don't have cooperative or foraging. That's like so annoying. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to feed everyone. I should have just played it for the trade. See, he's getting to like slingshot everything through with cooperative and then do a super eating with foraging. Like he's done one feeding. Look how much food he's got. I mean, the long neck helps some of that too. So yeah, the population, none of these, I, I'm going to keep them alive for the trade. So I should have played the hard shell in the end. All right, but we will get to do some eating as a carnivore here. Um, we're going to focus on the ones who are not yet full. Oh, they have scavengers too. Yeah, so he's full. Oh, oh wait, there's no food. So I just get to eat over and over and over again here. Uh, let's do this. He's still going to scavenge. And then... Yeah, it makes no difference. I guess the question is, who do I think has more victory points? Maybe this guy, because I'll deny him one victory point from population. So that's it. So we lose a little bit of pops, but they're still alive. We're going to bank some food. So he's got so much food. There's no way I'm winning here. I really like going like, super efficient um, herbivore routes instead. So we bank points for population and traits. And then we count all of our food. 
Yeah. Oh, look at this guy. This, I'm, I'm thinking this guy's the one to the left, and this way is probably the one across from me. Look, this, we came in third. Ah, new game, new game. Carnivore is really fun, but I've, I mean, maybe I played the carnivore wrong. I've never had a really strong run as a carnivore. Let's see if we can get a good plant combo going instead. Uh, foraging and triple intelligence. Well, foraging's good, because you do get to eat twice. Um, when you go, who's first player? I'm going to be last. All right, we'll make sure there's just lots of food kicking around. Intelligence is still good as a herbivore. You discard a card to get two food from the bank, which is kind of fun. All right, but um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to put down Forager. We know we've put down a ton of food in there. We get to eat twice, like ba basically for action. So I'm just going to go ahead and pump up my population a bunch and hope that we'll be able to have enough food left over. Oh my God, he's got the long neck plus cooperative combo. So he fed everything before any food, which is good. It leaves more food for us, actually. You've got horns and burrowing. You've got the long neck as well for the free thing. Okay, we ate our full, our fill, so that's okay. But man, these other guys have some sweet stuff. So um, we're going to throw away carnivore because we're not going to play carnivore. Now someone else might. So we're going to look for someone who's going to uh, increase their body size a bunch. Um, I mean, he could go to pack hunting, but I don't, don't think it makes sense. I'm going to make a new species here with cooperation. So when he feeds, he feeds over here. And the foraging does kick in for that, which is kind of nice. Um, so I'll just raise this population again. So, oh, sorry. Raise the population because I'm not worried about carnivores. I might be wrong. This guy, and we didn't know what this guy was going to do yet. Oh, he's got fertile, climbing. No, we're okay. Lots of food. Well, some leftover food, which is good. There you go. And auto feeding because there's enough food for everyone. So it's just doing it in the appropriate order, the one that makes the most sense. But it doesn't matter because there's going to be literally enough food for every single person to eat. But we might not have been able to... Well, I guess we would have eaten anyway without the combos. Still, let's see what we can do. Everyone's playing a card for food right now. I'll be second to act. I don't think I'm going to need symbiosis. Well, I definitely don't need pack hunter. Here's the thing. How much do I think I might be able to get away? I'm going to be second to eat. Maybe I can afford to go slightly less food. Especially, oh, I'm going to be able to put foraging on my my cooperative species here. So when we eat, we're going to take tons of food in one go. I think... We are probably going to be able... Uh, do I want to make a new species? I didn't get another cooperative, right? No. I like the idea of foraging here. It won't double proc cooperative, but basically when we feed with this guy, we're going to be taking four food, keeping two for ourselves and sending two over there. So we may as well go and raise our population up to four. I'm very tempted to just throw climbing on here now. Feed twice, or we could go four and four. So we'll take four food, then we'll take four food, and we'll be fed. Two feedings. Um, second act, I bet you we can do it. But one of these guys might go carnivore and F me up. Let's play safe. We'll put climbing on this guy. We're gonna bank one fewer point this turn. That's okay. All right, there's no carnivores. We were paranoid for no good reason, I guess, but there you go. And with these long necks, like, like the long necks feed for free, but it's from the bank. Uh, oh, there's not gonna be enough food for feeding everyone here. Um, so more long necks are in the game the less demand there is here. Okay, so we're going to be fully fed. We would have been fully fed anyway. And some of them are not going to be. There you go. So this species is going to go extinct. He loses a bunch of population. He loses some as well. Good for us. Bank, good number of points. Excellent. We're now first player. We're going to call fertile. Oh, we get a second cooperation. Nice. Let's just get rid of the carnivore here. We're going to be first to eat. So if we cooperation over here, we can f send food over to the right. Um, I might want a warning call in the middle. Let's trash a fertile. Throw a warning call here. Although, hold on, this guy is not very defensive. Warning call is great when you, you know, I'll just trash the warning call. Warning call means neither species to the right can be attacked, but I mean, this means this species have no has no self-defense, which isn't great. Um. I'll play... Well, Fertile right now doesn't help us because there's no food. 
but there might be at some point. I might just hold on to Fertile. Or I can raise his pop. We don't know how much food there's going to be. We are, do know we're going to go first. I suppose I could hold off on foraging because I don't. It's not going to make a difference if I don't have a higher population. Maybe I just hold on to both cards for now, because adding fertile right now doesn't do anything. Adding foraging right now doesn't do anything unless I also ditch the uh, the fertile to grow the population. And honestly, I could consider just growing the population. We'll probably have enough food anyway. I think I'll just hold on. Hedge our bets ever so slightly. Do, 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 do. The first act means we don't know what people are doing. Yeah, the cooperative long neck stuff. Ooh, 20 food being added to the middle. Nice. Might mean we're fertile will work out next turn. So we're going to feed from here. Which is going to go there and there. So we got five food in one go here. And the fact that we're not auto-feeding means there isn't enough food for everyone to go around, but we will be fully fed. Now, next round, we are going to be eating last. So we might not get two feedings. We may. I mean, we should hopefully get one, but it's possible that it might not, depending on how things go. Um, thank you very much for calling me. That's my uh, cell phone going off. <laughs> um... Fenced hurting scavenger. I think because we're going last, we really do want to put a high food species in here. We're not going carnivore, but if there's no carnivores in play, just ditching the scavengers all right too. There's no, there's not going to be any food left, so the fertile is not going to work out anyway. Some body size, but probably not a carnivore kind of play. What do we do here? I'm a little. Shit, maybe I should evolve a carnivore. Replace the foraging with carnivore over here. The cooperative would still go and work every time this guy ate. But he's not big. We also need sort of pack hunting. So we'd replace two. I guess I could replace climbing. I don't know if the carnivore's got enough targets. This guy's armored up. Yeah, there's lots of horns and shells. Hmm... Let's just make sure our one feeding, which is probably all we're going to get, is as effective as possible. So we're going to grow his pop. So if this one eats, we're going to get two food, two food, two food. Maybe we can eat a second time. What I will do... Um, is I will do that, because that's a clean second eat. And, and, I mean, it won't carry over here, but the chance of us eating 12 food is pretty low. We sort of do have to get a carnivore. The thing is, this guy's got no traits. We're, we're going last. We know he's got none. So a carnivore will be able to eat this guy for two. Oh, no, he's got warning call. Shoot. He's got warning call. He's got horns, which would cost us a population, but we might be able to eat. I'm wondering about just holding on to the cards. <sighs> Got to be something we can do. I don't want to raise the pop because it'll probably die off. I guess what I could do in preparation for making a carnivore, like maybe increase his body size. I mean, the foraging does become a waste at that point. Unless I get rid of this guy's foraging and we get ready to do some sort of crazy combo. Yeah, there's... I suppose I could attack someone with horns and lose a unit of pop if, and that might be okay to get us started on a carnivore. Let's see, like if I were to go and do this carnivore, I need at least one population to survive the horns and then pack hunting gives me a size of three, which means I could attack this guy, although once he's full then I can't. And the problem is, I'm, I'm going to want to eat with my super dudes first. I think I might have to just keep a bunch of crap here. This is really not great. There is no cart or hand limit, at least. All right, well, in this, if I was first player again, I might do things differently, but... What I need is a long neck. Oh, wait, 23 food is a lot. 
Okay, I think we might we might be able to get a second feeding. I don't know if it's gonna be full, but there you go. Grab six here. If we can get four food left in the pool. Yeah, excellent. I think we played this right. Fully fed over here. Technically we'd had we could have risen this population by one. We got some various deaths and things going on. I banked the most points this turn. I like that. Okay. Uh, I am feeding still fairly close to the end. I don't think a fat tissue is going to be useful for us. Uh, it's hard to read everything. We also don't need a fertile. I think I'm still going to put a fair amount of food in here because I think we'll still benefit from having that. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and make our carnivore. I'm going to get rid of hard shell. Um, carnivore with ambush so I can ignore warning call. I do have cooperation. I could build the, the guy over here, but most likely I kind of feel like I'm probably going to want to put pack hunting and then just give him a bunch of population. I'm going to put fat tissue on here. I'm not going to grow his population, but if we have extra food... Oh, I guess he'd need body size. Because he can store extra. I could grow him. I might want to grow my carnivore some more. I might just want to give him one body size here. Like, population equals body size with pack hunting. But I will need to feed him a lot more, and that might not work out. Whereas if I just bump his body size up, it's going to be a little bit better. So that I can... So right now I have a body size of 5, that would give me to 6. I guess 5 and 6 doesn't seem to make a difference with what I'm seeing on the board. Okay, I'm going to grow the, the fat tissue guys size by 1. Done. Well, that's interesting. We actually... It, it's hard to defend this many species from carnivores, so... Oh, we built a carnivore. It's a bold choice. Can he eat my dudes? He can eat him, I guess. Because I'm tempted. I could just eat his carnivore first. But I also want to get the food from the middle before it goes away. I think I'm just going to do this. No, he can eat my carnivore too. I'm going to do this to max out taking food from the middle. And most likely we'll do it again. Yeah, so we're not going to be able to store any on fat tissue, but my herbivores will be fully fed. And yeah, he is attacking here. Okay. I could eat my own species, but I don't want to do that. Um, I can't eat this guy, but I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat... Well, he's going to go extinct anyway. Because there's no more food for him to eat. Ditto these two guys. He's already fed. But knocking out... You know what? I'm going to be the only carnivore on the block. That does going to give me two food. Oh, he's intelligent. He discarded a card to get two food from the bank. Take you out, and then I'll be able to feed this guy one time. I suppose I could... Oh, no, he's got horns. I'd rather not attack that. Yeah, that species is going to get wiped out anyway. I could bring this down to actually prevent him from being able to cooperative as often. I mean, he's also got the cooperative, but... I don't know who's been banking the most. And that's one of the things, like, keeping track of that is really, really good. Long neck foraging. I'm not really going to be able to slow that down. Honestly, let me do this. All right. So I didn't lose anyone. Okay, that was really good. Didn't get any fat tissue, but that's okay. Last round. Scavengers and carnivores. I mean, scavengers do give us more food. Um, I am second to eat. These guys should be fine. I might throw a scavenger in the guy with the fat tissue. Do I want more than one scavenger? I don't think so. Do I want more food? Probably don't need him. Second to eat. I will, I'll throw the carnivore in. Still a fair amount of food. 
We could even consider new species. We can do all kinds of things. Um, let me scavenger. So you're going to get food whenever a carnivore eats, which should be fairly often. Oh, we did lose one pop over here. Let me go and rebuild you up to four, because that was quite nice. Uh, I might want to throw climbing on this guy, in case I am a little bit worried about getting attacked. On the other hand, I mean, I could make another carnivore, but I don't think that's the right thing. I'm wondering if we max out our population here, so that we can eat more often, score more points. And then I could grow this guy for more fat tissueing. Because at a size 7, which is what this guy is, I can basically attack whatever I want. So the fat tissue is fairly safe. Like, whether I grow this guy's pop or his size, he's going to eat as much food in the end. And this is safer because he can't be attacked. And I don't, I don't need to eat as much to keep him alive. Although, ooh, population scores points at the end of the game. I forgot. I would have been able to double dip. Assuming there's enough food, which there might not be. 15 food is not very much. Oh, he got rid of his long neck. Which is kind of annoying. Because that means he's going to have to eat more out of the pool. Uh huh. I don't think there's going to be any food left for me. No, he's going to finish it with his cooperative. Well, dang. Maybe I should have put scavenger on him. Just didn't expect that to be an issue. Um, and I guess with Scavenger, I, I don't know if Scavenger triggers cooperation. Maybe. All right, I don't... Here, I'll attack the guy who's a Scavenger. I guess there's more than one. I'll be looking to eliminate species to bring that... Oh, he had horns! Shit! Lots of scavengers triggering that. Yeah, losing that population really stinks. Him drawing cards isn't going to give him any points. Um, horns, horns. I mean, I may as well still attack for the food. So I'll attack a guy who's size 2. Oh no, it won't, it won't overbank. Because we'll lose a pop, which cost me a point, but I still get the food, I think? Which breaks even, and then he has one less pop to score. I'm actually not 100% sure how that worked out. I feel really good about this, though. I think I've banked a crap ton of food. So I had more, more trait points, more population points than anyone. More meat, and more plants. Yeah, I crushed it. Excellent. Well, there you go, folks. There is a look at... Uh, ooh. Oh, we did unlock new species created. Carnivore ambush pack hunting. Excellent. New combos, multiplayer streaks, win to a human. Yeah, like, you know, the online game for this is cool. There's so much sort of like metagame and thinking. What does he think that I think that he thinks that I think that he's going to do? Yeah, that, that is a big part of this game. Thank you very much for watching, folks. I'm going to see you guys next time.